Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. I'm coming to you from my home in the Pacific Northwest in the greater Seattle region of Washington State. And it is another gorgeous summer day here, high of 80 degrees or so. Uh, no rain in sight. <laughs> Uh, so it means I'm doing a lot of watering in my garden, uh, but it's, you know, nice, warm, sunny weather, uh, puts everyone in a good mood, so it's delightful. Uh, it is the end of July, which means I need to check in with you all and share what I've finished, what I'm still working on, new projects, uh, and things like that. So that's what this episode is going to be about. So the month of July, what happened? A lot. <laughs> uh, first there was July 4th, which means all the fireworks. Um, I actually live in Renton and they're doing construction at the park, which is on Lake Washington, which is where they usually set off the fireworks. And because of the construction, they were not setting off fireworks this year. Fireworks are banned in the city, but somehow and for whatever reason, everyone's setting them off anyway in city limits. So uh, July 4th is always a really rough night of sleep. Um, people are setting off fireworks. The dog is freaking out. It wakes us up. And so for us, it's really not a celebration. Uh, although we did celebrate that day with friends, uh, but the night of July 4th is always really difficult for us. But around July 4th is usually when I harvest my garlic from the garden. And so this year was a little different. I feel like I'm going to say that every year. This year was a little different. <laughs> Some of the garlic looked ready to come out before July 4th. So I actually harvested some of the garlic on like June 30th, which is odd. Uh, usually I don't do that. Uh, usually I wait and pull it all up on July 4th. Um, all the garlic goes in the ground on the same day. Um, they go in mid to late October. They grow all through the winter into the spring and everything. They're very low maintenance for me in this area. Uh, and they usually all come out at once. But this year was a little different. Uh, one, I was struggling with back pain, so it was really tough to get down and pull the garlic out. So I kind of had to do it in phases and I had to ask for help, which slows me down because I just want to do it. <laughs> uh, so some of the garlic came out before July 4th, some of it came out afterward. Uh, but at this point it is all out of the garden. Uh, they're braided up, hanging on the wall. Uh, we even gave some away to friends last week. So um, yeah all the garlic for everyone. Then not too long after that, uh, we had family over. Uh, so we, you know, uh, clean and rearranged the house to accommodate for lots of people to be here. And we went around adventuring and seeing things and hanging out, spending time with each other. And so that was a good solid two weeks of hanging out. And so um, I did have to give up my craft room during that time. Uh, to become a bedroom. So I wasn't able to, you know, come in here and easily pick something out to work on. So I had to limit myself to a small number of projects while people were here for two reasons. One, I wasn't going to have access to my craft room. And two, um, I wanted to be around spending time with people and I didn't want to be tucked off in the corner being antisocial. So <laughs> so I picked uh, a couple of projects to have out that I could be working on while playing a board game or watching a movie or something. So uh, so those are the things I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, although there were a few things I was able to get done um, before family came and after they left. So I was able to get some crafting in. Uh, but those are the main highlights. Uh, uh, major holiday and uh, family vacation. So the main thing I worked on while family was here visiting, and I did manage to finish it, I started it, 
a few days before people came and I finished it while they were here actually <laughs> uh, on like the last two days I think that they were here is when I finished it so I wanted a really simple knit um, I did tidy up my craft room a bit in preparation for you know this becoming a bedroom for someone and what's really nice is able I was able to condense all of my acrylic yarn into my main cubby storage here so I used to have um, a separate piece of furniture it's a it's a shoe rack actually that I was using using for my acrylic yarns and I noticed there was space in here and I thought I'd go ahead and try it and I almost fit all the acrylic yarn in here so I was able to get rid of one piece of furniture from this room which is fantastic makes more space in here uh, and then that motivated me to try to stash down my acrylic yarn uh, I mostly have been buying it because it's so easy to take care of so gifting someone uh, an item made out of acrylic yarn they can wash it and dry it it's not going to shrink on them and it'll be totally fine so I like acrylic yarn for that um, and I was really liking using it in blankets blankets are huge projects and so if I can save some money buying uh, inexpensive yarn to make blankets out of then uh, all the more knitting for me so <laughs> And uh, acrylic yarn is really great also, I think, for baby blankets. Um, you know, babies can't help themselves. They're going to spit up on things and make a mess, and that's just how it is. And you're going to want to throw that uh, piece of clothing or blanket or whatever into a washing machine and dryer and have it just be done. So I cast on a baby blanket before folks came. And then I finished it while they were here. So uh, I felt like I wanted something a little different, but also simple. So I called this the Simple Stripes Baby Blanket. It's on my Ravelry project page. Um, my Ravelry username is Knits 2 and I have a link tree down below in the description box if you want to follow that link and check out my projects on Ravelry um, if you want to follow me friend me whatever it's called on Ravelry <laughs> do that too um, but I've been doing uh, a lot of corner to corner baby blankets lately and I have tutorials for a couple of patterns here on the channel but I wanted to do something different so I thought let's go back and forth in rows so that's what I did back and forth in rows just in garter stitch um, and I just kept it really simple, big color block stripes, uh, and I'll put a picture here on the screen of the finished object so you can see the whole thing. Uh, it's laid out in my backyard. And yeah, so, uh, let's see, I started with the pink. This is a Karen yarn. Um, I don't have the label, so I don't know... The exact color to share with you uh, but this was the first color I cast on it's probably good I started with it because this used up all of it and so that let me know how big to make these stripes so this was kind of a like I wouldn't say scrappy but a again my intent was to just use up things from stash so I weighed all the yarn and I started with the color that I had the least amount of yardage with and I started with that one so it would tell me how if I want the stripes to be the same width then starting with the smallest one tells me uh, the largest width I could possibly go and have it work for all the colors so um, laying flat it measured like five five and a half inches I mean it's garter it's stretchy right uh, and then I went into this tan color which I believe is, I'm guessing because this tan was gifted to me, but I'm going to guess it's a Karen one pound because the skein is huge. Uh, so this is Karen like the shiny uh, yarn and this is 
not shiny at all, but it's in the big one pound thing. I have this beautiful golden yellow, which I'm pretty sure is a Red Heart yarn. Again, I don't have the labels. This one I do have the label for, uh, and I made a sweater out of this that I eventually donated to charity because it just didn't really fit me the way I wanted to. But uh, this is Red Heart in the Aaron Fleck colorway, so it has kind of tweedy bits in it. This is another Karen. It's like a shiny purple. This is Big Twist. I'm trying to remember which store that comes from. But it's Big Twist. It's um it's not shiny at all. This yarn. And then there's this orange color, which does have some shine to it, but it's definitely not a Karen yarn. Don't know what it is. So, uh, what are the yarns? I don't really know, but, <laughs> uh, but I really wanted to make, uh, I decided to go with warm colors. So it's like a sunrise, sunset, uh, just super warm colors. And uh, yeah, just back and forth in garter. So it was just knit, 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 knit. Um, while we had um, family here, so I had already figured out at that point, I had already finished the first two stripes. So I already knew the width and everything. Um, and then from there, it was just keeping going. And so I worked on this while we watched um, some TV. We watched uh, Will Trent, which was really good. Um, we watched the whole season. And we watched some episodes of Hoarders, which I find, uh, I don't know what the word is, but sometimes I feel overwhelmed by my things, especially in my craft room. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a lot of stuff Sometimes I feel really overwhelmed by it. So if I, every once in a while, watch an episode of Hoarders, it's like it, you know, helps me cope with those feelings and encourage me to really think about buying more stash or how to organize my stash or, you know, how I view these things. So anyway. Um, yeah, so I finished this baby blanket. It's just a little over a thousand yards of yarn that came out of my stash. And so I'm excited to make more projects with acrylic yarn and use up those things that uh, I've purchased. Now, um, what I'm going to show you next are some finished skeins of yarn that I spun, but the whole project is still ongoing. Um, so I have a bag, it's actually right here, I think I've showed this to you before. I have two bags of Jacob wool and as you can see through the bag there's white and brown and of course mixes, and that's just how Jacobs are. And I think that's really cool. So uh, I'm working on my fiber here. I have lots of wool in this room that I really want to spin and use. And so this is a project that has been languishing on the bobbins for a good year. So. I finally got around to um, spinning up some more white Jacob. So I've been separating the fibers into the white and the brown. And then of course there are pieces that the white and the brown are mixed and it's just too difficult to tear them apart. So I have a pile of, that's gonna be the white and brown kind of mixed together. So this is just the white and this has been one of the plies was sitting on the bottom for a year. And then I spun up more and plied it. And so it's not the best, in my opinion. It's 
not the best but it's you know super thin fingering to lace weight um, which is great and then um, I have the brown which part of this was also on bobbin for a year but less less of the fiber was sitting there for a year most of this was spun uh, recently and look at that it's just beautiful so if you compare this to this you can see what I'm talking about this just looks like super even and soft and this looks wiry and super twist you know like there's too much twist in it kind of thing It's tough because in places it looks like it has too much twist and then in other places it looks like it doesn't have enough Ugh, yuck so this brown is gorgeous and it's definitely if it's a fingering it's a heavy fingering I think it's more of a DK or a sport which is fine um, but it's just absolutely gorgeous and uh, you know one of the things I love about spinning the natural wool is that it's got some of that variation in there just naturally so it's not just solid brown and it's just beautiful so I did not um, I did not count the yardage on these I need to do that uh, but these are off the bobbins and They've been soaked and hung to dry, and they're absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait to do more um, Jacob Wool spinning, and eventually um, knitting up a colorwork project with these. So that's all I finished in the month of July. Honestly, I've been doing more in the garden than I have in the craft room, which makes sense it's summertime it's the time to be gardening and in the winter I'll be more inside crafting um, but I did manage to finish you know some skeins of yarn and a blanket um, but if we're on the topic of spinning I did put another ounce of fiber on my Turkish spindle so this is um, autumn mist is the colorway beautiful colors. Uh, this is 50% alpaca, 50% baby doll south down wool. And this is from Softin Farm. And I've spun up, this will make half of the fiber. I have it on my Turkish drop spindle, which I got from Jerry Brock. And just slowly working on that. Um, I did split off some of the fiber, just a little bit, and I tried um, a supported spindle. And I feel like I'm getting the hang of the supported spindle, especially with the cup. Um, so this is a drop spindle or suspended spindle where it hangs and you spin and a supported spindle means the spindle sits on something it doesn't hang and so you could have it sitting on a tabletop or your leg or whatever surface um, but uh, you know a lot of times those spindles are sold uh, with a cup or a bowl uh, but some kind of rounded uh, dish for it to sit in uh, so it doesn't you know spin out of it it wants to stay in there so I have a cup that um, can you can brace between your legs let me grab it so I can show you so uh, there's enough room here where I can put it between um, my legs my thighs and while I'm sitting on the couch I can support its spindle um, with the drop spindle I need to be I can't be sitting back on the couch because I need it 
enough room for it to hang. So I always have to sit forward on the seat. And um, sometimes that's hard on my back. I'm working on my posture. I actually need to start um, some physical therapy to work on my back after I had all those back problems this earlier this year. Um, it's a good thing. I'm gonna, you know, improve my strength and all that good stuff. Um, but anyway, it's just kind of nice to try out the different things. So, so I'm working on this spin and part of what motivated me to put more fiber on the spindle is that I cast on a project with the yarn I've already spun up from this fiber. So basically I'm spinning this yarn with spindles and if you spin you know that that is slower than using a spinning wheel, right? And if a project goes slow enough I completely lose interest. So um, there are these two colorways I'm spinning. There's Rambling Rose, which is a lot of uh, pinks and blues, and purple where they've mixed, and the Autumn Mist, which also has pinks and blues, but greens and more rosy reds. And so I bought these two braids of fiber, thinking I would use them together in a project, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I wanted to cast something on. So... Um, I don't have enough for a garment, so let's not even try. And then I thought of making a hat, so I was going to do a, a modified Musselberg. I was going to put a, like a texture pattern on it, but not do the double layer thick, just knitting out to a hat. Uh, and then I just, oh, I don't know, it wasn't... It wasn't what I pictured in my mind. I didn't like it, so I ripped it out. And then I thought, okay, this is a three-ply yarn because I'm chain-plying it on my Turkish drop spindle. And three-ply yarn is supposed to be really good for cable work. And I was thinking, you know, let's do some cable work with this yarn and really get the benefits of how I'm constructing it. So, what would be good for cable work? Headband. So instead of a hat, I'm making a headband. So I'm still going to get a nice uh, accessory to wear in cooler weather on my head. Uh, I usually wear my hair up in a, a little bun on the top of my head, so this will be something I can wear with that. And yeah. So I have ripped this out and started over a couple of times, but what I've settled on is this honeycomb pattern. And it's just gorgeous. I love it. So I did a provisional cast on with some waste yarn. This is actually some Coopworth I spun a few years ago, so it's all hand spun in here. Uh, and this is in the, just the autumn mist colorway. So I, my original intent was that I was going to be striping the two and I didn't want to deal with two yarns and cables. So screw that. Uh, there's another, uh, there's enough color va variation in here that I don't need to stripe the, the yarns. So it's turning out very well. I'm doing this kind of, uh, kind of I-cord edge to it, uh, which is very fun. So on the right side, uh, I've got two stitches on each side that make up this sort of I-cord. Um, on the right side, I'm knitting them. And on the wrong side, I'm just slipping them purlwise. And so that kind of makes the stitches curl around. It's a very neat edge, which is what I wanted on a headband. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, 
at first I was a little worried because if you look at this fabric from an angle, there you go, it has a bunch of holes in it. See all those holes? You see that? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know, the wind is going to cut right through that, isn't it? I'm going to wear this headband and the wind's going to cut through it. I'm going to be like, why am I even wearing a headband? I think it's going to be okay because of the texture on it, you know? Yeah, I'm loving it. That's pretty great. So, um, yeah, I'm, I don't know, maybe halfway through this ball of yarn. And so it kind of motivated me to put more on the spindle because I might run out. <laughs> and uh, I could make a few headbands with different cable patterns out of these yarns. And I could keep them all or I could give some as gifts. And yeah, I think it's pretty great. I also have on the needles a pair of socks. So this is a yarn from Hobby. It's called Moonwalk. I have two balls of this. This color, well, these don't have names, do they? They're just numbers. Mm hmm So this is color number six. Uh, but it has uh, blue and yellow and brown. And yes, hopefully you can see the sparkle in there. So I made a pair of shorty socks out of the other ball. And now I'm making a pair of shorty socks out of this ball. So I did finish the first sock. So you can see the stripe sequence. So I like to knit my socks top down. Um, I do a German twisted cast on, which is my absolute favorite. Uh, one by one ribbing. This time I did it for 20 rounds. Sometimes I do 10, 15, rarely do I do 20. I felt like 20 this time. Uh, I've got a heel flap and gusset, which is my new favorite. I've got a garter stitch edge on the flap. Um, and then just continue the one by one ribbing down the top of the foot and they just fit really well. So, oh, and a rounded toe and I don't mind a Kitchener stitch. So I really like top down socks and I have the second one on the needles and I've just finished the 20 rounds of ribbing. So I need to do the heel flap. So yeah, they're not going to be exact matches. They will be fraternal twins, which I really like in my socks. I don't have to stress about making them match perfectly, but you can tell they're a pair, um, kind of intentionally offsetting the stripes so that I don't have to worry about getting them perfect. Okay, I have two more things, three more things, three more things, oh my gosh. I don't know, I got the, I think it was after everyone left the house and we took a few days to like recuperate our energy and um, I just went like full hog casting on stuff. Uh, this is not one of those things. This was already on the needles from the previous month, but I feel like I have a lot of projects now that I did not have before. So the um, next couple of things I want to talk about are sweaters. So one of them is, if I remember correctly, the pattern is called Raglan Sweater. Um, I finished the back piece. So it's completely off the needles. So it's knit from the bottom up in pieces. And this is the back. And I finished this 
Oh yeah, it was while family was here, all I needed to do was like 15 rows here with the decreases. Um, they all went out somewhere to a park or something and I had to stay home and um, log in remotely to work. And so I kind of worked on this a little bit during that time. Uh, so I finished the back piece and I have not cast on the front piece, but that is what will be next. So there was progress made, although not very much. And that sweater's out of acrylic yarn, so it also satisfies the getting acrylic out of my stash. And not to say that I'm going to become anti-acrylic yarn. That's not what's going on here. It's just that I have a lot of it, and so I'd like to use it. I bought it to use it. I would like to use it. Um, I'm also noticing, I mean, inflation is real. Um, but things just seem to cost more than... The increase is just so sudden and a lot all at once. Um... It seems like knitting with acrylic yarn is not as affordable as it once was, so it's a little tough. Um, I also cast on another garment with acrylic yarn. Uh, I have a lot of this blue in my stash, a lot in acrylic. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue. Uh, and I thought I would just try to wing it with a cardigan. So I am just trying stuff. So I have, uh, I did a provisional cast on in a contrasting color. It's very contrasting from the blue. Uh, it is this hideous bright red that I think I will only use as scrap yarn because I dislike it so very much. But I'm using it. <laughs> uh, and so the idea is this is like the right front and then on the needles I have the left front working down from the shoulders. And then these are provisional, so when I go to do the back, I will pick up these stitches, cast on to go on the back side of the neck, and then pick up these stitches and then be able to knit down. Uh, so I've got some texture in here. It is difficult to see on this yarn because it is such a dark color which has me reconsidering my color choice but I've already made it this far so I figure I'm gonna keep going it's still beautiful it's showing up on camera it's very nice this is the fleck stitch and it's just knits and pearls very easy to do um, I put some increases in here to make the neckline swoop in a little bit. Uh, I just have ribbing on the edge here, knit some pearls, one by one ribbing. And yeah, so this is going to go around my arm there. It's got like a drop shoulder kind of thing. We're going to see how it works out. I have a cardigan in my wardrobe. It's a store-bought cardigan. I really like the fit of it. So I'm using that as somewhat of a template. And I say somewhat because I'm not doing all the shaping that's in that garment um, into this one. Uh, but I'm just using it as a sort of measurement guide. So how wide here, how wide here, how long, that kind of thing. 
Um, but yeah, so I, I don't, I don't know you guys. I, I, I should have more faith in myself, but, uh, I went gung ho for like two days. This was like two days of work and then lost all confidence in myself and started doing other things instead. So, uh, I'm just going to try it and I figure if. I make something that doesn't quite fit me, but is still a functioning garment out of my acrylic stash. Uh, I can always um, donate it and someone else can get use out of it instead of me ripping it out and throwing the yarn back on the shelf and just not knowing what to do with it. So I'm going to proceed forward if I end up making a garment that isn't really functional, then I will rip it out and figure out something different to do with the yarn. Um, I'm not gonna donate a lopsided something with armholes that don't match, right? Um, but if it's a functioning garment and it just doesn't fit me or my style or what I was going for, then I will give it away. I just remembered there is something else that I finished this month and it was actually a crochet project and I forgot to make a Ravelry page for it. I'm gonna have to do that now. Um, I made a hanging basket for some garlic. So we have these nice hooks that um, Michael put up on the wall for me and I hang my garlic from these hooks every year. And I've seen these baskets on Pinterest. They're very adorable, these hanging, kind of baskets and um, there's no pattern to go with it so I just kind of eyeballed it and created my own version and I really like it although the yarn is a bit too drapey I think I should use one that's got more um, rigidity to it. Uh, hang on. This is the yarn that I used, Karen Simply Soft Tweeds. And this Simply Soft yarn, this is that shiny Karen yarn. It's very drapey, which is, which is great. It's a great quality to have. Maybe not for baskets, right? Um, but it's 97% acrylic, 3% viscose. Um, this was a full skein when I started. This is what's left after I finished the basket. Uh, but yeah, I like the look of it. Um, and it functions just fine. I just think if I make another basket, I probably will. Uh, I think I'll use maybe um, more like the Karen One Pound or Red Heart um, or one of those that's little more sturdy than drapey and uh, yeah but I like the acrylic because the again it's easy to wash and maintain so I'm storing food in it and when that food comes out I want to wash it before I put more food in it and so I can easily do that in the washer and dryer and it's not going to shrink right although creating a felted basket Oh boy, now we're talking about another craft. I mean, not really, it's still knitting and whatever, but... <laughs> all right, y'all, that's all I have for you. Um, it's been an interesting month. I feel like I have been through so much <laughs> and done so much, I'm kind of wiped out and exhausted. So, uh, but I'm excited to uh, work on these projects. Uh, goals. I'd really like to have the headband finished this month um, and make more progress on this mystery blue cardigan that I'm constructing. Just at least getting a sense of whether or not my the start of it is even gonna make something functional. Um, but yeah, so 
uh, I hope you stay safe, you stay well, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Until next time, folks. Bye.